Hi, we are back at the Silicon Slope Summit. Um, I am Liz Hawker, and I am here today with Rob Etherington, the CEO of Clean. Rob, welcome. Thank you for coming over. Thank you, Liz. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, we are so appreciative of you stopping by the booth so that we could talk a little bit about Clean. I love to hear your story and hear all about what Clean is up to these days. Super. Uh, Clean is a nanotherapeutic company, the world's first, actually. We know of another company just like us. So let me just explain for two seconds what that means. So we're not a small molecule chemistry company for pharmaceuticals. We're not a biologic for pharmaceuticals. We're a nanotech company for pharmaceuticals. And what we're doing is we have our lead asset, CNMA-8, we call it, in clinical studies right now for some of the most vexing neurodegenerative diseases, which include ALS, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, and multiple sclerosis. And so why this is relevant is because you and I and the whole human family, as we get older each passing decade, we become more at risk for neurodegenerative diseases. And Clean's goal, our intent, is to see if we can help the body restore the energetic capacity it requires to take care of its own housekeeping in the brain. Amazing. Yeah. Now, I know you have some clinical studies coming up, some results, don't you? And tell me about we, those. We do. So we have a phase two, what okay. is called a proof of concept study okay. in ALS that is going to read out unblind, it's placebo blinded data this quarter. So literally by the end of the year, we'll have the data as to whether or not we can improve neurological muscle function in a small cohort of ALS patients. That's never been proven before. So we're super excited to see the outcome of that data. And then by sometime in the second half of early next year, so let's call it summer, we'll find out whether or not our registration study in ALS is effective. What that means is a phase three registration study is the last study we require before we can take all of our data to the FDA and ask for registration approval to take the drug to market. And so if, um, if that study is effective in ALS, on top of the study reading out this quarter, that would be tremendously valuable for the, devastating, the devastation that patients experience with ALS. Absolutely, I mean, groundbreaking, amazing impact on patients and their families and loved ones and so on. What, what an amazing um, endeavor that Clean is after. I just am so impressed. Tell me about your, you, you being here at Silicon Slopes of all places today. So we're not a, a typical tech company, but we did found the company in Palo Alto in the heart of Silicon Valley. Right. And I realized um, early on in about a year after we founded Clean that despite the fact that we were surrounded by biotech companies, that uh, it would be behoove the company and our investor loved the idea to move here to the heart of the Intermountain Rocky Mountain region to Utah where we uh, picked up Clean from my 15 year stint in the Bay and brought it here to the mountains. And it's been an extraordinary uh, good experience for Clean. And I'm here because we took the company public on the NASDAQ December 31st. It was a fantastic uh, New Year's Eve present to our investors, to our shareholders, and to our uh, and colleagues that work with me at Clean uh, in a SPAC transaction. And so yesterday I was on the, uh, one of the general session breakouts to speak with the CEO of Traeger, the CEO of Instructure, two other companies that also took the companies public this year mm -hmm. uh, that are much larger than me in market cap, both at revenue, to give three different perspectives of three different types of company that all came to the NASDAQ this last uh, eight, nine months. Yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts around the SPAC process. What, t give me just some high points about that, that whole process for clean and, and getting to the NASDAQ. So we'd originally contemplated bringing the company public around IPO time and a classic IPO when yeah. our data came out positive. But we joined um, you know, this, this SPAC juggernaut that has been in play now for about a year. Uh, we had a company reach out to Clean and ask if we'd effectively reverse merge with them as is the case with the SPAC. And our board and our investor uh, base voted for that. Uh, so we could come to NASDAQ earlier, tap the public markets um, uh, as relevant when our data comes forward and bring the company public. And it's been a great experience uh, this last nine months. Fantastic, what a, what a great story. Now tell me about your background. What got you to the place where you are now with Clean and this int incredible groundbreaking work you're doing? So what, I, what I've done for 30 odd years now is commercialize drug assets for pharmaceutical high medical needs. I started uh, cutting my teeth straight from grad school at uh, Pfizer at the Park Davis division of Pfizer. I was one of the team leaders in the Lipitor franchise, a very big small molecule drug that everybody's heard of for cholesterol. 
and then I went to a small startup, Actelion, as the first uh, marketing hire in the Bay Area, where I was for 13 years. And Actelion, most people haven't heard of this, but it became the largest biotech in Europe and was purchased by Johnson & Johnson for 30 odd, million, or 30 odd billion dollars a number of years ago. And so I was reached out to by some investors uh, who said, look, we're funding this new technology that could be super helpful in neurodegenerative diseases that have very high medical need. Uh, again, not just ALS, but multiple sclerosis and Parkinson's and possibly others. And they said, would you come and build a little entrepreneurial startup around clean? So we've raised uh, $160 million over a number of private rounds until that culminated with the SPAC transaction on the 31st of the year. Amazing background. So what's next? What's next for you? What's next for clean? Yeah. We're, we're standing by waiting for our data. If uh, uh, our, our hope has been to, to that the, the patients can benefit from our, our lead asset. Uh, when we talk about neurological function in ALS, or for that matter in MS, we're talking about everything that you and I take for granted every day. The way I'm breathing, the way I'm talking, the way I can chew my food, move my hands, walk out of this press meeting, all of that requires very effective neurological function that my brain, and my neurons, my muscles are all coordinating together. And unfortunately, patients who live with ALS every day, the people that struggle with this devastating disease, they lose all of that capacity. And they have very few options available to them. And it's also the same in MS. Even though MS patients have drugs they can take to tamp down their body's immune system, and prevent new attacks, they still lose neurological function. And so what we're hoping for is over the next few quarters, our drug will prove efficacious in a number of double-blind placebo-controlled studies so we can um, hopefully have that drug be on a, on a track to approval of the FDA. Well, gosh, thank you so much for this super important work you all are doing every single day to help patients and their families with ALS and MS, and I can't wait to see how those trials uh, turn out. Thank and, you, Liz. You know, fingers are crossed that we'll get there. But um, thank you for being here. It's we my really pleasure. appreciate Thanks you. Thanks for asking me some questions. It's great to be here with NASDAQ. Uh, yeah, thank you for coming to NASDAQ. Yeah, thank you, Liz. <laughs>